Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about a brand new code editor called Zet. But before we get into talking about the new one, we're going to talk about an old one because there is a direct link here. And there was an editor called Atom. This was actually created by the founder of GitHub. It was a really popular code editor for uh, JavaScript and web development especially, but it was kind of a semi-lightweight, modular code editing environment. You could add plugins to it. It's sort of like the genesis of the stuff that we use today. So this was Atom. Adam. There's a big fan base behind Adam. Sadly, uh, it did not last. But what it did give us is something called Electron. It used to be called Atom Shell. This allows you to basically uh, use a version of Chromium, which is like the JavaScript runtime that Chrome uses, uh, to create applications. So people have been creating more or less desktop web applications using Electron for ages. And it all started with Atom. So Atom used Electron as its underlying uh, runtime, I guess you could call it. And this ultimately is what Visual Studio Code uses. So Electron is being used for a ton of different tools. Slack uses it, a couple of other things I can't think of immediately off the top of my head, but definitely Visual Studio Code is one of the highest profile things working on Electron. Now, problem with Electron is there is definitely a bit of a performance cost to be paid. And now we have a solution to that. But first, if you are still interested in Atom, uh, it is dead. Uh, GitHub no longer supports it, but there is a community-based effort around it called Pulsar. So I guess we're talking about three IDEs today. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out Pulsar. I might actually do a video specifically on Pulsar at some point in the future. Let me know if you're interested in that down below. But now let's get to the focus of today, and that is Zed. Now, Zed Industries, again, uh, were the people behind a lot of this original technology. Uh, they were the creators of Atom and then TreeSitter, which is like a language parsing thing, a kind of a replacement for regular expressions that a lot of these applications use. Uh, and it is all about lightweight code editing, but the idea behind it is to be fast. So let me show you something right now. So here is Visual Studio Code. One, two, maybe three seconds to start it up. Not bad, not great. All right, and let's do the same thing with Z Instant. And it's a little thing like that. Like basically when it's loading large projects, when it's loading things in, it loads pretty much instantly. So let's just do that really quickly again. It's hard to catch on video because it's near instant for Visual Studio Code, but there's definitely a speed difference. So code, maybe three seconds to get up and going. Now, Z, instant. And that's the kind of thing. This is an IDE that is focused around being fast. It's written in Rust, which is a very cool thing. And I hope you guys have been kind of enticed by this because so, now I'm going to scare a couple of you away. There is definitely a downside to Zed, uh, and that is this. Uh, right now, there is a reason why I'm using my Mac to demonstrate it. The only version that is available at this moment in time is the Mac version, although there is definitely a project undergoing uh, to get it working on uh, Linux and Windows and web. Uh, so Linux is the furthest along, uh, and this is very much being actively updated. So if you're interested in where this project is going and what is required there, uh, it is going to be ported to these other platforms. But for right now, this is a... Um, Sadly, a Mac only product. So uh, to those of you that do not have a Mac at this point and aren't looking at something about how it'll show up in the future, I apologize because uh, yeah, that's kind of the end of the demonstration for you. But this is one of those things that could be coming to your platform soon. So still worth checking out. You can download it completely free, by the way. Again, speed is a very big part of it. So it just uh, across the board runs fast. It was written using Rust. Uh, the fact that it's written using Rust, I, I would think that porting it to other platforms shouldn't be that hard to do. Another thing that they've done is they've integrated into the AI solutions that exist in the world today. So let's go take a look at Zed over here. I've logged into my Copilot account. So what you're going to see, if, if you're in a project, so this is a Rust. This is actually uh, the code for Zed. So this is an open source project. You can download the source code, like I said earlier on. It is entirely in Rust, but let's go in here into, say, one of these tests. And let's go here. So if I start typing here, uh, you start getting all the code completions like you would expect from it. And then uh, you got here, you get summaries, you get explanations as it goes. And this is entirely being driven by Copilot as long as you have a Copilot account. So I'm logged into it. You'll see down here, it is available right there. By the way, while we're down here, you'll also notice that a number of different languages are supported out of the box. Uh, so uh, 
yeah, pretty much the major stuff. You can think C++, C, even Zig is in here, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know why we scrolled there. Uh, but uh, there's uh, language server support in there. So if you're working, say, with GDScript, GDScript has a language server, so you could use it, and it will automatically pipe in the appropriate information and so on. The IntelliSense is being provided by Copilot, but there is another option here as well, which I click over here. And you'll notice there is this assistant panel and you can actually hook up if you have uh, chat GPT, if you have a key, you can do chat GPT code uh, comments and conversations in here as well. And um, that is another aspect of this tool. I'll close that one down over, where did you go? Down here, we have a terminal, uh, which is pretty standard feature these days. Uh, and then we've also got chat. So what you can actually do is create chat channels right here, it kind of feels like Discord. So if you're working with another developer, you can invite them into your chat channel. You can chat about your code. You basically have this chat server built right in and you can synchronize and have it go to the exact same lines of code as you are typing and going about things, which is very cool. Of course, also if you open up a project, you get this project view like this. Uh, typical menus are available for you. You're finding and searching tools and so on. Uh, if you're into colors and themes, there's uh, you can't theme it yourself yet. That's gonna come with the 1.0 release, but they've got quite a few of them right here. Uh, so if you want to switch up your themes, that is very easily done over here. Your settings are driven this way. By the way, if you are a uh, Vim user, there is a full Vim keyboard mode. And up here, pretty straightforward stuff. So you got your find in project, your selections, your searching, and so on. Uh, so yeah, it's a fast, lightweight, Rust-driven um, editor or IDE with integration with Copilot and ChatGPT in there as well. And it'll be interesting where this guy ultimately develops out to. So that is it. Again, ChatGPT and Copilot out of the box. Fully language aware, has language server protocol support in there for auto completions. Uh, so in the box, you do have an integrated terminal, you have the themes, uh, you have Zim, uh, Vim mode in there as well, and then all this team-based stuff. So if you're working with someone else, you can have these chats, you can have various different uh, conversations going on here, have this chat server built in, tie things to your code directly, automatically jump to the code, collaborate with somebody else, so then you can have them come and look at your code. So if you're working in a team environment, this part might be really a cool feature for you. Again, uh, work on work with code on any machine. So someone hosts it, guests come into it. You can just go through the source together. Again, navigate together. You can see where the current person is looking at in their actual code. And then another neat thing about this, especially for a game development channel, all of the uh, stuff is actually using GPUI, rasterizing the window on the GPU, just like a 3D video game. So that's why it is so fast and smooth to work with, like from a... Um, typing and feedback setting. And if you're the kind of person that finds Visual Studio Code just leggy and too slow and so on, this guy is, is just basically made for you. Again, designed around multi-cores. Um, and yeah, so they've also got their uh, tree sitter that they use here for doing uh, the searching and querying within things. Uh, so yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Zed. Again, it is uh, an open source project. Now, the downside to this guy is that it is currently, again, only on uh, Mac OS for now. But there are projects underway for Linux and then ultimately Windows. So if you're willing to wait around a bit, there could be a new competitor for you. So if you if you like like the light weightiness of, uh, say, Visual Studio Code, but you want it to be much, much, much faster, but you're willing to give up like the plugin stuff, this guy could be a good pickup for you. Now, one thing to do, definitely be aware of though, uh, there's also, and I never showed it, uh, here, you have your palette. So that's a command shift P on Mac and all your various different commands are available here. But you're going to notice if you're used to um, working with Visual Studio Code, you're going to see this is a very small subset. But what this thing does is it, it allows you access to your code. It supports uh, a pretty good variety of languages. It has that language server support in there. Uh, and again, it engages with two of the most popular AI tools out there. Uh, the chat GPT. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that because I don't have a chat GPT four key, uh, but also uh, GitHub's Copilot, which you can uh, log into on GitHub like so and have full on access to. So it's definitely an interesting project in my opinion, but I'm curious, what do you think? Are you going to check it out if you have a Mac and if you're on Linux or Windows, are you going to wait around to see this one? Let me know, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.